I'm pretty much sure you never knew this opening existed before this video. And that's why you have all the reasons to subscribe to this channel because it is so discouraging seeing a lot of views from non-subscribers. Press the subscribe button with your elbow right now as we destroy the king's pawn game. What defense do I recommend? Obviously the greatest opening response to one e4 in the history of chess, c5. The Sicilian defense. Who told you that the Sicilian defense is not a suitable opening for beginners? Well, they were right. But in today's video, I'm going to show you the simplest way to play the Sicilian defense that even a beginner will begin to play this without problems. Now, first of all, let's begin with a weird gambit that you have never seen with your own eyeballs before. After knight f3, instead of playing the standard moves like knight c6, e6, pawn to d6, or queen c7, I want you guys to try this knight f6 kind of the early highest defense you guys if you think about it and you can see stockfish doesn't really hit this in fact this has also been played at the top level as you can see in the masters database it's called the names of wish variation and so it's trusted by super grandmasters as well this attack on e4 is similar to the early highest defense as i mentioned white normally plays pawn to e5 to attack the knight on f6 and that's why you see e5 is the top played move in the master's database. It just looks natural. So once you see this move, you always want to go knight d5. Now here is the main area of my meet. The second most played move, which is pawn to d4 in the master's database and in the leech's database. What can also play knight c3 or pawn to c4 in this position. But let's start with d4 in this position. What do you do? <laughs> the right move in this position, ladies and gentlemen, is c takes d4. That's okay. And then you continue with e6, knight c6 bishop b7 castle short you continue doing everything that you do in the ally highest defense or you go crazy with the move pawn to b5 <laughs> so you're just sacrificing two pawns and in most cases you're going to see most of your opponents taking the b5 pawn you can see that's the top played move after which you can simply go queen a5 check which wins the bishop on the spot especially if white doesn't respond well for example after knight c3 white is simply losing due to knight takes and you're about to walk away with a discovery check wherever you want to go if bc you simply take the bishop just like what we do in the O'Sullivan gambit after pawn to b5 bishop takes b5 and queen a5 check rumor has it that white needs to play a computer move knight bd2 which i doubt most of your opponents are going to find well after this you can just go ahead and take the bishop and again white needs to find a computer move pawn to c4 double attacking your knight and the queen instead of queen c6 you can also go queen a5 so that after pawn takes you take everything that white has in this world including the d5 pawn i find this to be much easier because next you're planning to go bishop b7 pawn to e6 and knight c6 bingo and here is an exciting news before i proceed regardless of who you are if you have an online business or even a tech solution you can actually sponsor my videos so that i can help you boost your brand even if you're just a freelancer or a software developer the link is in the comment section down below right let's continue once again we are talking about this weird way of playing the sicilian defense which happens to be our first plan in this video after pawn to e5 again you simply go knight d5 and after d4 you go pawn to b5 now this move pawn to b5 is a blades move i should mention in real games you simply want to take on d4 and i'm going to show you how that goes so after b5 let's say this time white doesn't take on b5 and they take this other pawn on c5 the simplest you can do is to go pawn to e6 rather than going home and there's little or nothing white can do to defend this pawn moreover if they continue with the top played move taking the second pawn again this will be a mistake due to queen a5 check and once again if they play knight c3 the top played move what's wrong with these guys here you just take and you're going to be up a piece who am i bishop d2 you go queen takes b5 because what else bishop takes and then you take the other pawn you just grab everything that white has in this position you're just up a piece or up a bishop after bishop takes and queen a5 check again the correct thing white should do is to play knight bd2 not knight c3 so you will see some strong players responding with knight bd2 in this position after which you just go ahead and take the bishop again they should find pawn to c4 after which you just take on c5 they will take your knight and then you take back on d5 look how wonderful this version of the sicilian is you 
you guys where else did you see something like this you guys be sure to hit the like button share this video and subscribe also let me know what you think in the comment section down below so once again after this sequence of moves we have seen that both bishop takes and pawn takes may be tricky especially in blitz and bullet what should be very careful to maintain their advantage which is extremely difficult at human level in fact in this position guess what stockfish recommends three top moves that i doubt any human can think of playing imagine stockfish recommends the move point to c4 why why would you do that the second move that stockfish recommends is knight g5 the moment you see these kinds of moves you know that your opponent is a potential cheater these don't just make sense you guys the other move that stockfish recommends is knight bd2 very unhuman moves so now you know that both d takes c5 and bishop takes b5 bring you back into the game without any issues nobody's going to play pawn to c4 in this position trust me with all your elbows even if this happens just take on c4 and if they take with their bishop what i recommend is to go knight b6 why knight b6 and not bishop b7 knight b6 comes with an attack and from here white should continue finding the top engine moves otherwise one wrong normal looking move will bring you back into the game i promise for example in this position Again, white needs to find bishop takes f7 sacrifice, which doesn't look human. But anyways, if this happens, just take. Again, the top played move is d takes c5, after which you can just go knight c6. And after cb, you don't even take back. To maintain your advantage, just go bishop a6. If queen d5 check, you simply have pawn to e6 and you will retreat your king maybe even on g8. Instead of bishop takes f7, if bishop b3, you can see the evil bar has started going up in favor of black now you can just take on d4 and if white takes you can play e6 that's okay but even better is to go bishop a6 why do i love bishop a6 you're just delaying white from castling not to mention that white will no longer have knight b5 if knight c3 is played now you go point to e6 you see what i'm talking about position is 0.5 as if we are just starting the game so these are the positions you're going to be having most of the times in my new sicilian discovery so at the end of the day you have a choice whether to take on d4 or to try my crazy gambit with pawn to b5 oh before i forget after pawn to d4 you don't always have to play pawn to b5 by the way this is just my crazy gambit that you will never see anywhere on the internet maybe before this video actually the best you can do here is to take or play pawn to e6 depending on what you are used to c takes d4 is okay after knight takes you simply go knight c6 why knight c6 because you are provoking white to take if knight b5 you have knight c7 and at this point i'm sure white is just going to start improvising trust me nobody knows this maybe they are going to play something like c4 after which you still go knight c7 knowing that knight b6 will just run into c5 so knight c7 makes a lot of sense and still you are attacking this e5 pawn by the way so if they defend it with f4 there are all sorts of things you can do you can play g6 continuing with your sicilian dragon or your perk ideas or you just go pawn to d6 because you want to take on e5 if knight takes you take back with your pawn and if pawn takes you take back with your e pawn white is just overextended as you can see this is not good you're going to develop your bishop and cast a shot you have more open lines also consider playing bishop e6 and point to d5 in the near future what about this other line where white does not play d4 in this position and instead they go point to c4 this is what you will see most of your opponents playing especially on leeches again position is like 0.2 still playable even in rated tournaments and other classical matches write this down playing knight b6 is okay but we only want to play knight b6 if that will come with an immediate attack for example if white slide squared bishop is on c4 it makes sense for us to play knight b6 with tempo but in this position you can see that it is white's pawn which is on c4 protected by the light squad bishop so it won't really make sense for us to play knight b6 attacking nothing which is why we can consider playing knight c7 so at best 
We always want to play knight c7 rather than knight b6 if there is nothing to attack on c4. That's the point to always remember. Because next you might want to play d6 and take with your queen. For example, after pawn to d4, the top played move, as you can see, first of all, you take on d4, because that's what you do in the Sicilian. And after knight takes, you simply go knight c6. There's nothing wrong with that. I'll just go pawn to d6, the perk defense move, because you want to take on e5 next. To oversimplify the game g6 is also an option to try and transpose this into some kind of the open perk if you don't like fianchettoing your bishop again you can go point to d6 right away because if pawn takes you just want to take back with the queen look at how beautiful your position looks after knight c3 guess what in this position you can even go back to your e5 stuff this is their line that i recommend and after something like knight db5 which they like playing it's up to you to trade queens if you want or first of all take on b5 with your knight because if they take your queen that will be a blunder of the century you have knight takes d6 and you're going to be up a knight so they better take on b5 with their knight after which you can exchange if you want oh play queen c6 queen c6 stops white from developing their bishop because you're going to take on g2 i'm not going to go very far at least you can see how dangerous this can be you guys so this was all in the c4 line if white doesn't play pawn to d4 once again after pawn to c4 just go knight c7 and after d4 you take and after knight takes you start oversimplifying the game beginning with d6 because you want to take so they will take and then you do that and remember to play pawn to e5 that's the key move now what if white doesn't play pawn to d4 or pawn to c4 sometimes you will see them playing knight c3 from here the best you can do is to play e6 because that also opens a critical line for your dark squad bishop if knight takes d5 this is just good for you no weaknesses you will play pawn to d6 to get rid of your double pawns and take your castle shot for example pawn to d4 in this position makes no sense because you have knight c6 putting more pressure on that d4 pawn so they better take allowing you to develop your dark square bishop with tempo look at how easy this is to play queen takes d5 yeah but how about queen b6 how is white going to defend the f2 pawn i don't know so white should better be careful not to take and i don't even know what else they should do here maybe bishop c4 developing a minor piece with tempo don't just take on c3 by the way because you are going to help white activate his pieces quickly so in this position knight b6 makes a lot of sense attacking the bishop if bishop b3 you even go point to c4 they have to play bishop a4 and then you get rid of that bishop so you remain with your bishop pair after knight takes you can go queen a5 if you want you can go knight c6 if you want but my favorite is simply pawn to d5. Connecting my pawns. If white takes with on percent, I just take back with my bishop. And now this is easy for me to swallow and understand. So after knight d5, the Ali Hines move. Never be scared of the move knight c3. You just go pawn to e6 and everything is solved. Sometimes instead of taking or playing bishop c4, you will see them playing knight e4. I don't know, maybe intending to give a check or I just don't know. But the best you can do once again is just to go pawn to d6, getting rid of your weakness. After ed, you take back with your dark squad bishop. And maybe if they just give you a check, hoping that you're going to blunder a piece on d6, the bishop yeah you just go knight c6 still defending your bishop and if bishop takes you take back with your pawn again if c4 you have knight b6 if castle short you can even save your bishop and castle short later oh just castle short immediately after knight takes d6 you take back with your queen all i'm saying is this position is still playable and dead equal even in otb rated tournaments other sideline moves that you might see, especially if white is just improvising, are moves like bishop c4 in this position. Once again, you can just go pawn to e6. You are not limited to what you can do. Just play logical stuff. It is white that doesn't always have to play logical moves. You can also play knight b6 in this position, attacking that bishop. And maybe you might even trap their bishop after bishop b3 due to c4. But they are not going to do that anyways. Maybe they will play something like bishop e2. After which you continue with any move that you want. e6 or knight c6. That's okay. The whole idea is just to be quick in development on the king's side and secure your king. Play a6 and start playing your normal Alihines defense stuff. Now lastly, there are some 
doubting Thomases out there who don't like accepting gambits or playing actively whenever they face an opening that they don't know. For example, in this position after knight f3 and knight f6, obviously white will have a feeling that maybe you are well prepared to continue playing after pawn to e5. And so they'll play moves like knight c3 in this position, just trying to hold back. But that's the point. If you want to continue with the normal Sicilian defense stuff, you can play pawn to d6, you can play knight c6, you can also play the French Sicilian with e6 so that after pawn to e5 later on, you go knight d5, trade on d5, you'll be fine. But what masters love doing in this position, as you can see in the masters database, is just to go pawn to d5. And the whole point is if pawn to e5, now they simply play knight fd7, kind of the French. Yes, it looks like we are giving up a pawn on d5, but there's this little tactic where we take on e5 something worth remembering and just in case you're looking at a move like knight takes that doesn't work i mean due to queen takes e7 white is just down a knight they're not going to do that maybe they will take on e5 after which you take back and here you're just doing better let's say bishop b5 check like what they like doing you just go knight c6 and now the knight is in danger you're going to take so they do this most of the times after which you take back with your b pawn if bishop e2 remember you can take the g2 pawn so they'll play something like bishop f1 theoretically speaking and this is when you can go point to e5 if you want to go back to your e5 stuff and look at how beautifully placed your pawns are you play bishop d6 or bishop e7 and cast a shot in the near future also considering to play f5 so that's how you play against some doubting thomases just go point to d5 and if point to e5 you retreat your knight back the other move that i recommend instead of point to d5 in this position is simply point to e6 just preparing for d5 like for real, if e5 again, you have knight d5 and you are just going to transpose back to the lines that we already looked at. So hopefully white won't do that. They'll probably play pawn to d4, after which you are always required to take in the Sicilian, remember, after knight takes d4, you can go knight c6. Oh, instead of knight c6, you can also play d6, immediately stopping pawn to e5. Now be careful, these are moments where you will see your opponents making aggressive moves like pawn to g4, which is the top played move in the master's database as you can see. In fact, this is indeed the curious attack. But against this, you can just play pawn to h6. If pawn to h4, the move to remember is pawn to e5. You attack something so that if g5 comes, you just take and take. You're going to be up a piece. If bishop b5 check, a theoretical move, you can offer a bishop trade. After bishop takes, you take back with your queen. In the Keres attack, you don't mind playing with your king on the center or just castling long given a chance. E.g. even though these pawns look scary, trust me they can't go anywhere. For example, if g5 you just be up a piece after text text. So they better save their knight on d5 which is under attack with something like knight a5. This is what they do. And now you go knight c6. You have no weaknesses. If g5 here you can even take on e4 like this because if knight takes you take back the other knight on a5. But if they continue being solid like point to f3 that's when you want to cast along so that's how you survive the curious attack where white plays point to g4 again in this last line you always want to play e5 given a chance start with h6 and then think of point to e5 so in closing if white doesn't play the most common moves that you expect to see and let's say they just play something else like d3 and ic3 here is how you continue playing the normal sicilian defense in these kinds of situations you want to remember everything that you do in the perk defense such as d6 g6 not forgetting point to a6 you think kill your bishop, you cast a shot. This is the easiest way to continue playing. Sometimes after playing d6 and white plays knight c3, you can even rush with this bishop trade and continue doing what you do. Or even knight c6. This video was sponsored by all of our paid members on Patreon. These are the guys who support Casper Chess financially. In return, we give them extra study materials and other premium content on Patreon to thank them in style. Not to mention that all of our patrons are at liberty to make video requests and ask any chess related questions you can join free membership and pay later if you want through the link in the comment section down below